Welcome. Uh, this is our first installment as a team. Yep, that's that's a team move. We must do it too. What is it? I knew it. This is my sis. I'm your auntie chef. She's anti chef. No, aunt. Back in 2019, she helped out with a Kickstarter for the Aquabats. And one of the things that I did was anybody that helped out, I offered at a certain uh, financial level that I would draw them a pencil sketch. And she came knocking on my door and decided to um, collect on that. So she has an image, but there's a catch here. Because she's my sister, I'm going to try to teach her how to draw it herself by drawing it with her. Wish me luck. <laughs> this is what we're going to try drawing. It's from a Chinese drama. Chinese drama called Joy of Life. Yes. Best character in there. He's so cool. <laughs> And he's like an assassin, super, super dude. Um, you've seen Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This one's actually a little better than that one, in my opinion. Just because it doesn't have as much cheese monster, like flying through the air, walking on nothing. But Except for it this does character. have some. It does have some. And this is the character that she chose. That This is the character that can do that stuff. Yeah good one. He's a good one. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this, and uh, we're going to go to an overhead view. If this is the picture right here, okay, so you're going to look in your head and you're going to say, where would it be perfectly square? Um, I just got a 90, 90, okay. So there, right there, so you have this much plus a little bit more, right? So that'll, that'll help you get a bearing for how you want to lay your picture out on your paper. So you'll notice that if you were to take this section and do it here, you're gonna be left with a little bit. So it's, it's not quite half again. It's a little bit short than half again. So what I like to do <clears throat> is take and center off a center portion and guess how big the picture is gonna be there. And then I'm gonna take and make a mark here to say that that is the same as that. And I'm pretty close. So, and then this is not quite half again, but it needs to be a little bit, a little bit longer. So just add a little bit to the top of the bottom. So <clears throat> that's how I plan it out. Then I look at the picture again and I notice that the negative space is the space that you can find on the outside edge that's not the person. So, And I just make those into basic shapes based upon where things lie. You want to make sure that you pay attention to about where, like if this is about there, that's about halfway in, this, in the square part, right? So then now you've planned out your basic shape in your head, right? So that's what I'm going to do here, which you probably won't be happy that I just scribbled on the back of my picture. Oh no! So that's it right there, right there, and the square would be... Yeah, right, right, okay, so I got those little half again, and then I want to uh, put in negative shapes. Now you'll notice that I'm going to do it for you guys. Right here is about halfway down the middle. Right here is about halfway up. One of the dangers to this is I'm also going to have to stand up a lot to make sure that I'm not making a mistake. See, I made this a lot shorter because when I'm sitting down, it looks longer. Does that make sense? Because this, this angle that I'm sitting at makes it so that the paper extends out. And that's why some of the easels are like tipped up, right? That's, yeah, that's why you use an artboard and you tip it up so that your eye level is like this. But for this video, I'm going to leave it like this and just try to make adjustments as I go. Like I said, I'm going to do some negative shapes and his mouth should be about here and it's going to be on this angle. So I'm going to go up here and his hair shape and I'm just drawing the contour line of his hair in a negative space and I'm going to have the picture end right here. And this is just roughing it in so that you can, you'll notice that I'm drawing really softly too. Okay. So I got the rough outline. It kind of gives me an idea. Now this chin, this mouth actually it looks like it's more like where the chin goes, but the chin is actually supposed to be down here. And the way that I know that is my rough in, there's a spear that comes out to where his chin goes. So I know that the mouth should still be there where it is. Next thing I do is I want to draw where the, his skull is. So if we draw a skull, it has this jawbone, right? And the nose, like pirates, you know? Okay, so this, this part right here is a skull. And you want to imagine, you want to imagine his skull <clears throat> and his hair is going to be above <clears throat> the skin and everything. So it's going to be bigger. So the skull's gonna be slightly smaller. 
<clears throat> the next thing you do is you take the center of his face, and I like to draw a curved line, and then the straight line where his the angle <clears throat> that is his face. Okay, so the curved line is the top of his head, and then his hair. So if this is the chin, so his eyes from the top of his head. Notice how it's not the top where you can see because he's leaning his head forward. It's actually a little bit further down <clears throat> because this is where the crown of his head's curving. So the center from the chin to there is where his eyes would be located. And that's his eye line right here. His nose should come down to the bottom of, but since he's tilting his head forward, you gotta make sure it's the bottom of a little bit further down because his nose is pointing down a little. And then his ears should go to his eyebrows, but he's pointing, like again, like I said, he's pointing his head down. And plus he has his ear, the top of his ears covered with a bandana. So you gotta get those eyebrows in the right place too. <clears throat> so now that we kind of have where his head's gonna be, you wanna make sure that you keep everything on this angle. Cause you don't like, sometimes people, sometimes people will be so used to drawing faces like straight, that, and, but the head is like turned. And this is actually where their face line is. And it crosses here, but then they draw the eyes over here and it just totally messes everything up. You gotta remember to follow the eye line. His hair looks like it leaves about this much space above his eyes. And then it has a bowing type thing to the center line. I want to keep roughing this in, but I'm going to start like shading a little bit to show you that real quick. So then you'll, you'll kind of come in here and make some more definitive lines that match. <clears throat> and then what I like to do is outline the light and dark where they meet. So it doesn't matter. You can, you can outline the dark spots or the light spots or both because all it is is the only reason we see anything is it's a separation between light and dark. Lines don't really exist in real life. Lines are just something we use to, in art to separate the lighter stuff and the darker stuff. Now, to me, this looks way long, like way over elongated. But if I pick it up, it looks even worse. So I was, oh, I was elongating, elongating it even more to try to make up for the, we're shortening, but I should have been shortening it. Oh well, easy fix. Boom, right there. What do you know? Put the mouth up here. The nose right here. How's, how's mine? Good. It looks like it's better than it should be though. Well, pick it up and we'll see if it looks better than mine did. Way to go. Hopefully you'll mess up later and make me feel better. Now that you have the basic rough in here, then you can start going in and putting in some of the, I always start by going and doing the darkest darks because the thing that's scariest is going too dark. So you've, you've got to be able to put in the darkest parts that, that, that there are right off the bat because that's if you can build and go lighter from there great but you just find the, basically the parts that are pitch black and when i'm doing hair i do it really loose because and then when you go in over top of an area that's like medium mid-tone you leave some of the, the white coming in but every stroke that you do makes it look like it's hair so you want to make sure that you follow the curvature of the person's head that you're doing as you're and the, the the way that the hair is combed or pulled back you follow that because it actually every stroke you draw is making a strand of hair so see how quickly it can fill in to make it so that it looks like it's shaded and then of course this one is a little bit different because it's kind of going flat across his face but anyway you can still do the curvature of what it would look like and follow along that curvature because it actually the stroke of your pencil gives dimension to your drawing so as you're filling it in, it's giving it dimension. And then the shading for this stuff in here, it's a lot lighter. If you squint your eyes when you look at an image, you can actually see how light or dark something is and it gets rid of the color that kind of blocks that view. And it looks like it's basically just about this shade right here. And all I did was just pull some from the dark area and pull it in here. A trick I learned when I was little. Most everybody knows that you can rub a pencil, make a mark, go fuzzy. Anyway, so that's a quick way to put in some ground or base shade, shade and then you can come in and put in some more shadow. And noses are really easy. People think they're hard, but they're not. Because all you do is just follow the contour and you just look at where the light and the dark meet. And it creates the shape of a nose. And once you get it all shaded, the next fastest thing to do, shading right here. Took me like four hours on the shading on this up there. <laughs> what is that from? 
Uh, it's not a direct quote, but it, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, yeah. And that's how you do lips in two seconds. It's probably big. <laughs> Doing it on purpose because you showed me up in the first part. <laughs> Try to catch up. <laughs> now it's cool with the light, lighter parts right here. You just softly put lines across them. And you kind of fade it in. And it just fades all those things in there. Then you grab an eraser and you go in the lightest light parts and you just pull some of those highlights out. Right, right in the middle between those. And it starts to look like shiny spots. Then you go in and add in some more mid tones over top. And then the eraser trick really works well when you're trying to just give a little bit of 3D dimension to them. You get the highlights of his skin come down. Then there's a little highlight on this rim of this. Got a highlight on his cheek here. Bottom of his ear. Side of his nose. And I can't really tell where his hair stops. It all turns black there anyway, so you just mimic the blackness. If you make a mistake, you can pull it back pretty easily with pencil. So what I just did was I looked at the picture and I looked at his hand, and it's about the size of the bottom of his face. So I just quickly made a decision to make it that big. And this is pretty bright sticking out right there. Doing good? Totally. Nice. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Even if you're not totally selling it. Alright, so his hand ends right at the end of his hair. This angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. I feel like mine is more squished than it should be. It's not necessarily squished. It's that the angle, the angle of his mouth and his chin, his chin is right here. So the side of his head should be right here. Here it goes up. See that? So this right here should be the side of his head. So his hair should end right here. And the middle of his hair should be right there. My hand looks too little. <laughs> Remember, I said it's the bottom part of the face. It's... Yeah, yeah, I remember now. But how come the arrow? How come the arrow know. goes there? Just watch, watch this. What's this? Okay, so that right there, right there, this fish should be right here. If you look, the arrow just needs to be angled more out of this fist, and it actually. Actually, should be under his chin because it comes to like right here under his chin. Basically, I'm just looking at the dark versus the light, filling in the darker areas, and the strokes that you saw me making right here were strategic to give this texture of some lighter areas and some darker areas. And then you can just go over and fill it in, smooth it out. I need a pencil sharpener, I think. They're both getting close to death, being sharpened. I really met this guy. <laughs> wow, this is a nice one. Yeah, that's what you're it, This is a B. This is nice. This is like a... This is not a number two. For sure. This has got some nice darkness to it. So now I'm going to go over and put in some more dark lines. Pull down. Light spot there. Now, remember me saying don't be scared of putting down dark, the dark areas? That's what slows our learners down. Because they haven't learned how to just be bold, just go. Just go for it. Yeah, exactly. Then you're done. Ta-da. But I still need to put in some highlights. I always like to put in the highlights at the end because it really makes everything pop. And clean up the outside edges. Look at your hands. <laughs> Then once you're done, you sign it. He looks more manly in your version. 